Hi folks, welcome to Carl's Vapor Reviews once again. Welcome to the video. Tonight I have a review for a mini RTA uh, sent on to me by John Bold of boldvape.co.uk and this is the review of the Mini Serpent from Waterfoe. Now, I'm going to give you some specs on it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to dive down, uh, close up out of it. I have got a build in there uh, and I'll uh, do a uh, wick or I'll, I shall re-wick it on camera close up uh, just to show you how much wick I put in there but essentially it's a single coiled RTA so uh, but the specs on it are it's Pyrex glass stainless steel uh, it comes in stainless steel at the moment I believe there's a black version coming soon according to the specifications from Waterfoe anyway uh, gold plated 510 pin it's a 22 mil diameter it's 29 millimeters high that's from base to the top not including the drip tip uh, it's 0.8 kilograms so that's 80 grams and it's a single coil build deck it has it's a obviously it's a rebuildable it uh, has a comes comes with a drip tip which is the drip tip that comes with the conqueror the hollowed out one it's top fill and it comes with uh, lots of spares which i'll show you in the uh, and on the close-ups so and that's about it it didn't doesn't tell you what kind of stainless steel they've actually used for the makeup of this but uh, it's everything about it uh, build quality wise for me has been fantastic now let's go and dive straight down and we'll go for close-ups of this device then we'll come back up and we'll have a chat about it rate it and uh, give you my thoughts on it as a uh, as a user of this device so we'll see you down at the table guys all right guys here we are close up with the mini serpent uh this is the box it comes in uh, very similar to the conqueror the box this is their type of packaging now uh, that denotes it this is the ss version and we have a waterfoe scratch and check authenticity label and uh, not much else on the box really see markings 18 plus there's a warning on the back there which is good to see and then we slide it open and then put that to one side you get an instruction manual a waterfall giveaway card i'll just show you the uh that's the waterfall giveaway card i think it's like what you got on it with the, the with the other products from waterfall recently this is the uh instruction manual i'll give you a look at that and you can pause the video with pictures Turn it over. And that's the instruction manual. Uh, very uh, detailed with the pictures. Now, in here, we lift that out. We've got the, the atomizer itself and a spare glass. And then we've got three packets and a, an Allen key in the base here. There's the Allen key, and then in these three packets there is some Japanese cotton. I've opened them because there's a uh, can't see through them. Uh, you get some uh, competition wire coils. Uh, you get three of them in the pack. These are the coils that you get. Some nice coils there. Uh, you get three of them in the pack, and then you get an absolute horde of I'm not going to tip it out but you get red o-rings blue o-rings uh, translucent o-rings black o-rings etc and some spare grub screws so that's the package it's quite a, a, a nice neat little package uh, so we'll get the device out and I'll show you we'll plop all this back into there and the waterfall card so we'll get that out of the way might need the allen key in a minute so this is the device let's go into manual focus for this because it saves it keep going in and out in and out and there we are this is the device as you can see we'll start from the top uh, drip tip which is the same as what's on the conqueror which is double o-ringed and also has this hollowed out inside there around the neck here to keep the drip tip warm i really like this drip tip i liked it on the conqueror and i, I like it now it's uh, quite a wide bore but 
goes down to let me just have a look with my it goes down to about seven mil at the base but at the top it's it's like 11 12 mil uh, with my ruler I haven't got a set of calipers just yet but it's about 11 12 mil at the top tapers down to about six seven mil down here really nice strip tip though I like that uh, etching on the top serpent mini engraved not etching should I say it's engraved in really uh, nice to see nice it's really nice the threads and everything are nice on this and we've got the top cap which is also your top fill as you can see and on this top cap there are two o-rings just get this allen key uh, there's one here translucent one and there's one here uh, to keep the to airtight but really nice threading on these on this i've had no problems with the threading at all then we've got let's just take off the base in a minute let's just show you the base serpent mini the finish on this device same as the concrete really really nice we have a uh, non-adjustable 510 gold plated with the, it's got an insulator around there as you can see between the negative and the positive pin negative threading uh, that how big is that roughly that 510 pin uh, in length is about six mil uh, so I thought I'll give you that dive, but that sort of approximation. Uh, we have airflow, which is really nice, not too slack and not too tight. Dual airflow, that is airflow slots. And we'll screw off the base. Really nice. I'll show you the base in a second. Really nice threading. You can take the glass off. Excuse if there's a bit of water on there, I've just washed it out. That's the glass. And this section is what you're left with. That's uh, all one section. And I'm not even sure that's press fit. I think it's all milled out of one section. It doesn't look like it's press fitted in anywhere, uh, this chimney section. Looks like it's all been milled out of one piece. So, really, really nice finish on this. This is where the, uh, the magic happens in here with the flavour it being so small and obviously the travel you've got very little travel to when it comes into the drip tip and out into your mouth so let's just put this you can change that black o-ring at the top uh, for the different colored ones that come in the package there's also a black o-ring in the base here which i'll show you now all right now this is the build i've got in here let's just get in a little bit closer with the focus there we are so effectively what we've got is a single coil setup as you can see uh, one leg here and one leg here now when you depending on which way you wrap your coil whether you go anti-clockwise or whether you start the coil off anti-clockwise or clockwise will determine because of the it's offset either side will determine how which way you, you your legs come off obviously I coil it I tend to coil clockwise so my legs come off over the top like this if you call anti-clockwise your legs will come off underneath here and it's a little bit easier if you call it anti-clockwise but I just threw this in but I shall call it anti-clockwise next time so the legs are coming off underneath rather than over the top and this is where you uh, adjust it's like a side adjust side tension adjustment it just traps your wire in here and you've got two of them these are your juice channels quite large juice channels here with a couple of ledges i just put the cotton resting on this ledge and a little bit in the channel and i've had no problems with wicking it has uh, looks like brass or gold plated uh, airflow hole here and then we have a is it ceramic let me just have a look at this now That is a what I believe to be a 
feels like a ceramic insulator. I could be wrong, but there's an insulator under here. No, it's not, it's peak. Oh, yeah, it's peak. Looks like a peak insulator underneath there. So that's the that's the base. Not much to see. Not much to see with the base, really. It's a single coil affair. Uh, that's a three mil diameter. So if you look at what space you've got either side, you could put a three point five in there to squeeze. So yeah, that's uh, that's the base, guys. So all we do is what you need to do when you're coiling it as well is I'll just show you this because this is a uh, quite uh, vital on these edges here you need to trim it as flush as you can I mean obviously I've got a pair of coil master snips and you can get right in close because when you put the chimney on it is going to catch on anything that is on here sticking out either side and probably short out so you have to make sure that you cut it really flush your wire so what we'll do is we'll zoom out a little bit with the focus. There we go. And then I shall put some cotton in here. Now I use a piece like this. This is roughly about 50 mil in length. And what I do is I tear off the top bit. and the bottom bit and then what I do is I I get I pull it all apart virtually not roughly not not too rough just pull it apart so you're separating all the fibers in that cotton so it's nearly so you can nearly see through it this is how I do most of my bills now with Japanese cotton uh, so you can virtually see through it and then I just start it off with a bit of a roll like so just roll it then I put it in my palm and I roll it like so and then I get that one of the ends really tight And then I pull through and then I pull it back and forth a couple of times to set the cotton in the wick so it's not strangulating. And then I trim off to the edge of the base like so. Make sure you've got some sharp scissors like so. Trim off these little edges. And then what I do is I uh, start a bit of a combing with my ceramic tweezers just like so because I'll do some more trimming again in a minute but this the first bit I did pulling the fibres apart and then obviously I've uh, rolled it in the in a way that it's sort of uh, gonna, gonna hold a lot of liquid within the center of that coil and then all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim it down a little bit just make it a bit more so there's not too much cotton in here because we don't need all this cotton and it's I'm just doing it by eye really I'm just now I've sort of uh, combed it out and it's looking a bit fluffy but all the time I'm just sort of keeping I'm just keeping sort of like a level with the edge of the base if you know what I mean then I'm going to fill it up with some uh, what shall I put in there I'm going to use some Cloud Island Key Lime Pie which is a 70 30 juice I'm just going to wet the wick now all over then I can sort of set it where I want it to be set not put anything on the coil just yet because I just want to uh, see what I've got cotton wise now 
if it's still a bit too long you think when you've wet it you just trim it down again but at least you've done all the all the combing Go. as you can see there probably will be too much cotton there still even so now but because you can if you can if you sort of flatten it out a little bit you can see I'm still going over the edge too much so just get into focus there we go so what I want to do is I want to fold this onto that ledge like so I think I might be okay with that so that's all I've done as all I've done is folded it I might just cut them little corners off there and there all I've done is I've just trimmed these two corners off here and I'm just going to fold it in again on sitting on so it's sitting on that ledge so it looks like that and then you've got nothing in the nothing in the lower part of the channel here and then the same with this one I'm going to cut them corners off again Sorry if I went off camera then. And then I'm just going to fold it under like so. And push it up against the, the wall. That's all I'm doing, just folding it under. I'm not messing with it too much. I just want to get it right. And I'm sort of pasting it to the wall really and just pasting it onto the, to the deck so as it looks like so. So get that bit in there. That's it. That's it. And then all I do now is you offer up the chimney section like so. Catch the threads. Screw on. And then you're ready to fill up. Close the airflow off. Fill up from the top. Dead easy as well. Quite wide kidney shaped holes in the top here. Three mil of juice this holds. There we go. All filled up and then we screw the top cap on. As you can see threaded on dead easy drip tip is on and that's it that's the mini serpent all whipped up built so we'll go up to the top we'll vape on it and we'll uh, we'll see what to, I think of it so we'll see you up the top guys hi folks welcome back up uh, I hope you got what you wanted from that close up and with the regards to the you know how much cotton you put in there wicking wise uh, with that kind of uh, wicking method uh, with that three millimeter diameter clapped and coil, uh, I don't get, I haven't had any leaks and it wicks really well. Now, uh, when you do fill it up, sometimes uh, when it being such a shallow th uh, travel from where the coil is, which is about here now, uh, to where the drip tip is, you can get a little bit of spit back whilst it's sort of like burning off the excess liquid or, or vaporizing the excess liquid. Uh, I've had a couple of little spits, but nothing major. Uh, but yeah, flavour out of this world, really, really good. Which, with an atomizer of that length, it should be uh, with a single coil. And I've only got it, it's like I say, it's, cl it's clapped and wire, but it's Canthal NI80. It's 0 0.48, 0 0.49 ohms on the Yeehee. Uh, and it's 35 watts, this is.
absolutely fantastic flavour. But it's a, it's not a cloud chucker uh, at all. Uh, but it does produce, you know, a good amount of vapor. But the fla it's the flavor is, is amazing. It's it, you know, I I love the Conqueror. Absolutely love the Conqueror. Uh, it's here. Uh, that's the Conqueror. That's the uh, Mini Serpent. And both have got great flavor. Uh, they really come on leaps and bounds waterfowl with their flavor on their RTAs and uh, the thing with this is it's single coil instead of the dual coil which is the Conqueror and you can run it at lower wattage so you know your, your single 18650 devices like this uh, even with a Clapton build in at 35 watts still get a good vape and fantastic flavor uh, without sort of you know running stuff at 70 80 watts all the time and uh, sort of like you know, using a lot of batteries throughout the day but for sitting on my ML class uh, which is where this is going to live now because it's really I just love the flavour from it excellent excellent device cons not really cons it's missing uh, I mean you've got yeah say it's missing but it's designed in a way that there's no juice flow control uh, so you've got to be careful with your wicking uh, if it's wicked too much you'll get a lot you'll get dry hits if it's too little in there you'll get leaks from uh, the airflow and out of the base here uh, I haven't got any cons uh, for it the build's dead easy uh, it's stainless steel and glass the threads are great I love the drip tip I think the drip tip's fantastic. Can get a bit warm with this Clapton in, but if you're using Canthal on its own, it won't get warm at all. But it's not it's not hot at all by any stretch of the imagination. But the threads are brilliant on it. I just love the looks of it as well, uh, especially on devices like this. But you know, uh, it's it's going to look good on most devices because of the size of it. It's it's aesthetically pleasing to the eye, and a great great little atty fantastic you can access your build and just uh, with it filled up so if you've got to mess around with your build at all you just tip it upside down wait for the juice to collect in the bottom your airflow will close anyway because you're unscrewing and then you can access your build and do whatever you need to do with your juice still in there so I'll leave that like that because I need to mess around with the cotton again now so <laughs> that's the mini serpent from Waterfo uh, would I recommend this device yes all day a uh, really good device obviously the only when i say it's got no cons earlier it's a con if you don't like you know with a single core device it's, it's one of them depending on how you coil it is regards to how much you're going to fill that tank up throughout the day it's only three mil with a clapton i'm going to be filling it up pretty regularly uh but if you're just going to use straightforward camp for and you're going to use it up towards like the you know 0 0.810 ohm mark uh, you're not going to be filling it up that much uh, but all dependent on what you build and how you vape throughout the day so it's your own personal preference on how much you're going to be filling this tank up throughout the day but you know you can't have a mini be called a mini device and not not and have six mil of juice in it uh, that's just the nature of this device so for me it hasn't really got any cons uh, and I would highly recommend it if you're after flavour and something small uh, aesthetically pleasing to sit on uh, any of the any of your devices that you own thanks to John Bold of boldvape.co.uk for sending this on to me for review and for Waterfo uh, to, for, for sending it to, to John the samples of this uh, 
and it will be available on bolvate.co.uk very soon i haven't got any pricing on it as yet it's not going to be expensive 20 quid mark guessing it's going to be uh, and for that it's good you know it's a really good device so thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in my next review thank you